Were you singing? <laughs> no, I just, I was singing along. You were singing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, welcome everyone to the Late Night Show. I'm Canada's Restaurant Guy, and this is Dominic here, and we have a great guest again tonight. And Dominic, you know what? I, I've been, like, because we've been putting this up in our not podcast space, and uh, I'm going to work on my intros. Yeah, good. I think. Yeah, yeah I, I, you know, that and tonight... We are not going to touch our face. Wow. Nope. Nope. No, apparently I do this a lot, folks. Oh. So I'm going to no, hold this really plant. No. I'm going to hold this plant all night. Like, oh. So every time I touch my face, I'm going to hold the plant. Well, have, just have the hand sanitizer, Jay. Okay. <laughs> we we <laughs> do it. I, there's, a, there's lots of studies about, you know, how many times we touch our face a day and touch. It's like and, a million, right? Oh, it's, it's, it's a shit ton. It's a lot. We'll have to we'll have to do a show on it. Tap your mic. Okay, it works. I'm gonna buy you a new mic one day too. This is a fancy mic, man. What the hell? It doesn't work with shoot. With shoot. It doesn't work with shoot. Anyways. How about that? How's that? Hey, that works better. That works better. Oh, yeah, okay. I think, I think you gotta do it. It's dynamic, so you gotta go sideways on it. Oh. So when you go sideways, it changes the volume, right? Okay. Mine's not dynamic. Mine's a, a different one. There's also the like the, <laughs> the dial, right? I don't know what I'm supposed to be set to there. What is it? Does it does it look like two moons? Two moons. Or no. two looks like a cherry upside down. Should I be on two moons? Yes. Oh, I'm not. I'm on the. There you go. How's that? You just changed your whole mic, buddy. Wow. <laughs> See, not only am I a podcaster for the restaurant industry, I'm also a professional mic guy. Yeah. Wow. Anyways. What a, what a title. There you go. <laughs> Thanks so much. Canada's restaurant guy and professional mic guy, right? <laughs> exactly. I never use my name. Anyways, before we get started tonight, let's do our disclaimer. All discussions tonight are based on our perspective, so no one else is. It's just us, and we don't know anything, so it's not really important. And should not be considered, if you consider what we talk about, official statements of our views, you're crazy. So, anyways, here's your statement. <laughs> Sarah, I guess she probably ran out of the green room. Just now. Seen, like, <laughs> first, first guest ever to leave before we even hit play. Oh, boy. Anyways, we have a great show tonight. Uh, Dominic, I'll let you do the introductions. But before we get started, everyone, tonight, as we record this up into our podcast cloud, um, which will be available on Spotify as well as Apple and everywhere else, um, please make sure you check out our shows. I've been loading a lot of shows up there, Dominic. It's looking, it's looking good. Cool. Um, also we have safe check podcast as well. Yeah. Got to do a shout out there. Uh, that's every week as well. And we're having a great time there. Got to get another next guest coming up. Yeah. Um, but we also have some possible pop coming out as well to promote our shows, which I think is <laughs> freaking awesome. Um, and yeah, uh, you just like designing that can, eh? <laughs> Like you can again. Look at that. Those are why awesome. Is, why, is, why is my can smaller? Am I like an eight ounce can? I don't want a European can. I want a full 12 ounce can. What the fuck? That's, that's the health can. Those are those diet Pepsis. They're half the size. <laughs> right? Okay, Which hell. is, by the way, a brilliant marketing move, by the way. <laughs> they um, get, I think they get more money for it too, right? I know exactly. For the ounce. Hell yeah. It's brilliant marketing. Shrink inflation. Yeah. Anyways, as Dr. Savon would say. Um, before we get started, if it, Dominic, what are you doing April 8th? Um, I'm going to be at the Restaurants Canada show. I can't Toronto. believe like 200 shows later and your mic sounds so much better now. Yeah. Where was so my mic better. guy? I, I got to hire a better mic guy. Apparently, <laughs> apparently you got to work on that guy. Anyways, uh, April 8th, you're at the Toronto? 8, doing 9, what? 10, yeah. At the, um, 
at the Tr Restaurants Canada show and simultaneously at the uh, Ontario Long Term Care show. Same, Maybe same two spots you. at the same place, same time. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Handing yeah. out pop. <laughs> handing out well, pop. We're handing out uh, if our, if our pop's ready, we'll do the pop for sure. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, so Canada, it, we got a little um, a clip for the RC show that you're gonna play here. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the thanks for that intro. <laughs> it must be the goofy T. Anyways, everyone, please watch this show. And if you're not going to the Restaurants Canada show, you know what? Sell furniture instead of food. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Welcome, everyone. Stacy, welcome Stacey. to your first live podcast. Thank recording. you for yeah. having me here. I would not have left to that because I got a lot of entertainment out of you guys. So I was just sitting here <laughs> laughing. <laughs> oh, we were tame tonight. You should see us some nights. Restaurant guy and mic guy sounds like a perfect combination for a podcast host. <laughs> Donna, yeah, we have to change the... your name, mic guy. <laughs> In uh, <laughs> we, we were once in Florida, and we we came out of a restaurant, and across the street was a a um, a bail bond place, and in the same on the same sign, honest to God, plus gun sales. <laughs> <laughs> this is hey, this is me. this is like two birds with one stone, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Jay, welcome, Stacy uh, Sikorsky. I think like the helicopters. Yes. Yeah, cool. I'm, um, I think I'm related to him down somewhere down the yeah, line, actually. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, from Incentivio. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Thank you for having me. You did say that right. Incentivio. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, excited to be here. Well, and where are you joining us from, Stacy? Oh, yeah. First of all, I'm this is I'm joining cool. from Saskatoon. Wow. I always say my life, my work life is in the U.S., but I live in Saskatoon. <laughs> They, they, what do they used to call it? City of Bridges or something, right, Jay? Jay? It was Paris of the Prairies. Oh, Paris. Okay. Yeah. Well, I Paris. think at one time it was the Bridges. That might have been Edmonton, too. Bridge City. Oh, yeah. Bridge City. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bridge but yeah, Paris yeah. of the Peri Prairies because of the Bridges. Oh, cool. There you go. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a good. Mm -hmm. It's they, a great city. They put that on their, like on their flag or something? What is, no. is it? In the, no. I think I our like, slogan is Saskatoon sign. Shines because we oh. have the most sunlight hours in Canada. Every city, Calgary says that too, though. I bet you, Stony oh, Calgary Stony does not say it. that. Yes, they Calgary do. says the, the, the weather's going to change in two seconds. Is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyways, Stacy, this is awesome to have you on the show tonight. I'm, I'm glad that we got connected uh, on LinkedIn, and thank you, LinkedIn, again for all the connections that we make. Um, let's hear more about Inciv Inciv I can't even say it. Incentivio. Incentivio. <laughs> Get a dollar hard. if you say it right, Jay. Thank you. <laughs> pay, for, pay for our pop. I got two bucks already. I got three. <laughs> pop lines. You got three um, bucks? You just can't say government tonight, Stacey. Don't say government. Bucks. Looney Tooney. <laughs> oh, thanks. Wow. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Tell us about tell about this amazing company. Yeah, so Incentivio, I um, we are a guest engagement platform. So we're encompassing all of the different. Hey, foodies! You know what? The world of hospitality is always changing. We know this. It's fueled by innovation and new technologies. At the 2024 National Restaurant Show, you'll find everything you need to plate up success for your operations, and now and into the future. Whether you're looking to adapt your offerings, satisfy shifting diner expectations, seamlessly navigating these razor-thin, crazy margins, and integrating data-backed strategies to offset your labor challenges, take it from me, Canada's Restaurant Guy. This show 
is everything you need for your business. So let's talk about this. Let's get down into this. So you know what? You're going to see ideas come to life at the National Restaurant Show. You're going to find inspiration and you're going to find the next big concept and everything that will help you with your business. Do you know this show floor, which is absolutely massive, has over 900 product categories from award-winning food and beverage items to innovative back-of-the-house equipment and technology. I hope I'm going to see one of those little robots. This event is your one-stop shop. So you know what you need to do? Go to the official website, www.nationalrestaurantshow.com, and register with promo code PODCAST24 to save $55 off your current registration rate. When it comes to staying on top of what's happening in hospitality and ahead of what's next, that's important, people. That is very important. There's no place like this show. Join your peers at the show for food service in Chicago, May 18th to the 21st, and get a taste of the future. I can't wait. tools that guests engage with in a restaurant brand and have them under one platform so that the restaurant brand itself and the lean marketing team that many restaurant brands have are able to action the data and be able to get insights easily. So online ordering, gift cards, loyalty, native mobile, or uh, sorry, white labeled mobile apps, um, white labeled mm-hmm. delivery. And then we utilize AI and data science to encapsulate that and make, let um, the leaders of the brand make really smart and easy decisions, knowing that the way that the industry is headed is towards a more personalized digital experience. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're trying to arm brands that are not Starbucks to have the power of Starbucks. Good that's cool. huge. That's cool. huge. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I've been here. And since there's, there's definitely Denver. a lot of small and medium sized businesses well, we know lots of them don't have podcasts or not podcasts yet. But, um, yet, but um, We're going what, what's it like? <laughs> what's it like? I love this question. The small. Well, I, I'm thinking like, do small and medium sized restaurants think that this is beyond their reach and they don't know? No. So we charge like a fair, like monthly SaaS fee. Um, yeah. so they, uh-huh. we have locations, like we have restaurants using us from as low as one location all the Perfect. way up to, I think our largest customer is 180 locations. Nice. Oh, wow. So yeah. And then I, oh. um, work on the team, lead our team that is overseeing 16 plus restaurant mm. locations. So mid market enterprise. <clears throat> yeah. Like I, my thought, I guess my question really there was like, when you, when you approach a, a two unit restaurant or a three unit restaurant. Are they kind of surprised that there's something like this available? Or are I they would starting say to yes, that? but yeah. the thing about our platform is that the what happened to the industry when COVID hit was that a whole bunch of little tech companies spun out of that time. And so there was a culture of best in class, which meant mm. somebody getting a separate tool for every single part of their business though maybe if it all integrates correctly it's great from a guest perspective but operationally that's a nightmare so consolidation is a big part of what we play as well and i feel like the culture of the industry is headed back towards that um and just making things simpler for the operators yeah i'm assuming stacy we're going to see this more and more as operators are getting too hard to there's so much stuff coming out in the tech space right for every angle so having it under one umbrella it's got to be the way that they're going to be able to maintain insanity. Yeah. Like, they, like they're, it's too much. It's too insane out there to get yeah. a finger on everything. And we integrate with the point of sale system, which is the heart of the restaurant tech. So they're still able to get all of their sales data through there. We just essentially provide the data on the guest engagement side of it. Nice. So how's that collected? Tell us how it's collected. So let's say Jay walks into a restaurant and orders something does not tell him his name. We're still getting that data from what you ordered. Perhaps after you ordered that thing, you then set up a loyalty account. So as soon as you set up a loyalty account, you're now bucketed as a rookie 
in the restaurant system. Okay. So it's really important to treat these rookies with love, care, and respect because they are going to eventually turn into loyalists. So we'll help them set up their initial offers. They sign up for their loyalty program. Boom, they're in the program. They order at least three mm -hmm. times. They're then considered a regular. Then they order at least three times, plus they come in on a regular basis. They're a loyalist. That's the most profitable part of your customers you can have. So you're setting up that automated marketing to them, push notifications, SMS, text, email, um, their account inbox, and then they have that same experience with your brand wherever they are. In terms of the AI side of it and customers potentially leaving, like I'm sure you have a branded app on your phone and you haven't gone there in months and all of a sudden you get this random push notification that says, hey, come in for 50% off cheeseburgers. <laughs> By that so time, McDonald's. come on, Stacey, it's a salad by that place. time, <laughs> okay, a salad place, <laughs> you get a free salad. Guess what? You know what? I like the cheeseburger concept better because what I'm going to say next is you've already left that brand to go for your salads. Exactly. There you <laughs> yeah. go. This describes but, as I just <laughs> yeah. stuff. But we have AI built in to capture guests that are showing signs of displaying that they're going to churn before that happens, which is a 50% really? recovery rate from that revenue versus the example I showed you is like a oh, two to 4% recovery rate. So we can automatically recover that revenue for a restaurant literally by like having them set up their best offer for when somebody goes into that category to pull them back. <clears throat> so this is, and I'm gonna sound old, but this is what coup coupons did you. back in the day. This is what yes. coupons did back in the day, right? So now they're called promo codes. Yeah, Dominic. And that's where you get your the promo code. <laughs> we have a promo that's code. That's what he's I doing right now. He's, he's cutting He's cutting coupons. Well, I, I understand <laughs> the word promo code because we use them. I know you do. Why? <laughs> Advantage 24. I use but promo code's like a new age coupon. <laughs> Coupon, well, now you made us old again, Stacey. But what it drives hell? traffic, but it drives traffic, right? Ideally, yeah, it drives sure. traffic. Yeah. Well, who and doesn't, especially nowadays, who doesn't want to save? Like, look, that's, well, well, that, it's it's awesome that it's available. The, and if the, you're a brand that has like a good, loyal customer base, you have unique mm -hmm. things going on, you're really great at branding, people that are a part of your brand will naturally want to interact with it. So some guests prefer to order online some guests prefer to order from the mobile app uh, so now when you said it integrates with the pos system when when I, I can order on the mobile app does the does your um tech integrate with the delivery services as well yes so that ordering data will go back to the point of sale system so it's still included in their sales data that they're pulling for the whole restaurant um yeah and they, then we, we white label with yeah, like we white label with companies like DoorDash Drive, Uber Direct, Skip yeah. the Dishes, nice. so that it looks like their own delivery and they don't have to manage that. We even have a partner that will lean on if in the rare case somebody actually has their own delivery, we can provide dispatch services there. Really? That's cool. I, yeah. I'm for I'm for people having their own delivery because I'm I'm for the restaurant keeping more of that money. Now your your platform allows them to do that if they ever decide You've got the still the odd restaurant that's saying, "Hey, we're bringing this in house because maybe we can do it better." But it's usually because they don't want to give up twenty five or thirty percent of their sale, and their yep. customers. As we have inflation coming, there's all these extra piles on costs. Oh, and now, so many might charges. Leave, right? yeah. So, um, if your tech allows for them to to do it or drive even better pickup, yeah, that's all awesome. exactly, and. The with the integration we have with like because DoorDash essentially has like their white labeled solution, which is DoorDash mm -hmm. Direct, it's a flat rate per delivery, so nice. there's no like percentage of charges. So the restaurant no can charge some of that back to the customer. No, it's uh, okay. so it is very good. I do find there is more of a culture in Canada than the US to go towards third party first, and I hope to. That. No, Stacey, you can ask labor question. Issue, okay? It's sorry. No, I was gonna. No, I, I gotta ask this because you can ask that one next. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> I gotta ask this one. Well, no, you just because because I had it on my list. I gotta ask this one to Stacy because oh, Stacy, you said 
I'm, I'm doing my homework tonight. So Stacy, you mentioned um, the importance of branding mm. in, in, cause you've been in the industry a long time and you've been working with some cool companies in the past <laughs> as well. And branding's really big as we see today. How important is that for restaurants to understand this? So people, restaurants are going to be listening to this and going, okay, hear this thing about branding. How's it important from, cause I always say it from your point of view for restaurants to build the brand and then all this other stuff kind of adds into that. How important is that? Like the most important. <laughs> if okay, you well, want to have, <laughs> the I just think yeah, the most important, oh, um, I, you. the the my favorite restaurant brands that i've worked with have been very i don't want to say like protective like intentional with the way that they treat their brand so um mm, like that. if they want to get a mobile app for their brand where people can collect loyalty points and online order and do all of that stuff send gift cards to their friends um Sometimes they'll think that the app is just like, oh, boom, all of the customers are going to come. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you have to advertise the app. You have to brand yourself. Um, <clears throat> so I think that based on, and that's what I try to do in the sales process is like, what is it about your brand that people mm -hmm. draw you to? Is it a legacy brand is not? Um, the best brands also understand that they need to embrace tech and that it makes their lives easier moving forward where I've come across some legacy brands that are like, nope, we have old school founders and that's just the way it is. I'm like, okay, peace. See you in 10 years. Like you're not <laughs> going to succeed in this digital age. It's tough. It's, well, I, I, I say that because all this stuff's really great. And I think the foundation of so many businesses today is the brand is having mm -hmm. that foundation. And, and like you said, it's not overnight. It's, it's a journey of building brands and, and have that, foundation before generation like yeah and z is like in it for themselves so if they're not getting yeah. something out of your brand they're not going nope yeah, yeah it's um Dominic, your turn well the, i think that the challenge is is it, it's unfortunate for the old school brands that aren't that aren't embracing it because they they probably have the most to offer yeah. Right, and and the most to gain, as well. Yep. Because they're old school customers that might be my age and older. We, we may never embrace that, but the reality is, is we're our numbers are shrinking, mm -hmm. and the guys that are Jay's age and younger are are those numbers are. That's <laughs> Bonus points tonight. Jay and I Come might on. be the same age. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's a, that's a I'll take I, I'll take that as a compliment. It's because he's got his app he's, thing He's 37 now. It's his AI well, I'm older then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think... Well, yeah, I, 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 I wish they would... Sorry, Jay. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, seniors I, first. I, just, I, hope, I, hope, I hope they really just start embracing it because there's so much to lose. It's just... That's the, that's the biggest thing right there, Dom, is what you said. The, they, they have the most to gain, the most to reap from this but it's really the most they're going to lose from it exactly because nobody's going backwards on this right we're not no, gonna we're not here gonna now. be like next year's less tech <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> next year's going to be less tech or and less what was social it? media the, the entertainment book remember <laughs> right is yeah. that what's coming <laughs> the old school flip books and you will be cutting out your coupons everything's going to come back wait <laughs> it's not Rolodex, that's what it's yeah, called. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Rolodex. Is wow. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> this is crazy. But that, but I think that's important. That's it, why I find these uh, all these amazing tech companies are coming into the space. And they're under, because I remember when tech was coming into the industry many years ago. And it was so fragmented. And everyone had this special niece. And I was getting tired of, you know, it's the same one again. It's just a different label and blah, 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 yeah. blah. Now we're hearing where they're all encompassing everything together and it's becoming a one-stop shop. And yeah. I, I think that's brilliant because the operator says we've had many shows on this on our show is just too hard. Like then one of the things I always say as every restaurant needs a coach, because how do you keep on top of your building, your brand, having your tech stack, 
working on your 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 your, your menu. Like we forget about the menu yeah. or the restaurant, the guest experience, all these things. How do you do all that without someone helping you along the way? Yeah, and it's things that I think brands don't like if they're intentional about it, they think about this. But no. I mean, the restaurant industry is the heaviest franchised industry there is. I'm I'm pretty sure it's the top. Um, but that franchise or franchisee relationship is so important. And if you don't have your brand locked down, your mm -hmm. culture, all of that, I, in my previous um, company I worked for, I grew our franchise team and it was like, I could instantly tell just based on how eager the franchise franchisees yeah. were, if they had a good relationship with their franchisees or not. And the ones that didn't, they didn't go through with activating and, and getting on the platform so like almost would use it as like a no screw you i'm not doing that really? <laughs> i'm like really? that's not a good relationship no, no and no, then no. post covid you see all of these um restaurant brands franchising that beforehand were not but it's because restaurants aren't getting the capital they were getting pre-pandemic and now they're having mm -hmm. to expand their footprint through franchising yeah, and I think I think we're going to see that more. We have we've had also more shows. Uh, we've had many shows on this topic as well. Is that I think the days of having one restaurant, and trust me, I don't want to take a jab at anyone on this, but the days of really being having a great success of you know a career or making lots of money is off of multiple locations today. It's hard to do it off of one location. And that might yeah. be where you own five restaurants or you own one restaurant. I don't think the days of just the one restaurants, especially in the franchise franchise side, we know that it's multiple, most of the time it's multiple locations, but on the independent operator side, we're starting to see this as well. More and more restaurants are getting bought up. They're closing down, right? It's moving to a smaller foot or maybe not a hundred stores, but they may have 10 stores. Mm -hmm. and, and, or they're partnering on multiple yeah. Yeah. like um, groups, you know, where I was, last weekend um the the chef is has a, a location with one partner and he's got two other locations with two other partners so he's oh, yeah. in, in three different restaurants and and a brewery as a, a partner as well where you've got four or five investors they, they're not ready for franchising but to jay's point they need multiple income streams to make it work yeah it's doable, but your location has got to be very niche and be an incredible experience to make yeah. it with, with one. And I think you're offering, um, but it's cool that it's affordable for even one location. That's I, to, to me, that's really important. Um, what's been, and when did you start? So I started here in September. No, Previous, when did the brand start? Oh, oh sorry. The brand started. The brand the start? We want to know too, Stacey. It's when been did you around start? about. We really care about you. Eight yes, we years. care. <laughs> eight years. Eight years. Yeah. And um, did it did it jump at COVID or did it hurt at COVID? Or both? Um, good question. So we just got our Series A funding last mm -hmm. May. So okay. slow mm -hmm. growth um, until that point. I don't know, like we've had fantastic years post COVID. Good. Yeah. Cause people yeah. are starting to realize they have to do something, right? Yeah, exactly. Cool. <clears throat> um, and, and now yes, more importantly, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I started, um, with Incentivio in September. Um, previous to that, I was at seven shifts, which is in my hometown, Saskatoon. Um, headquartered there. I was there for seven and a half years. I was the what 11th employee. In yeah. Really? yeah. They're, they're like an international superstar, aren't they? Like they're cool. That's yeah, awesome. they really are. Yeah. So Saskatchewan the, people make noise, Dominic. We, you know what I think it is? We ha are so resilient. I laugh to myself when I'm driving to my daughter's dance exam in a blizzard as I just had a conversation two days ago with somebody in Nashville that was talking about how when it rains, nobody goes out. <laughs> I was like, we just have to keep moving forward and doing things because we can't rely on the weather to cooperate. Yeah, no kidding. So eh? It's really it's really good for the restaurant industry. They just have to keep moving forward and figure things out no matter what. So that's a good matchup. So I was the 11th employee at Seven Shifts. 
Wow. Um, I was there for seven and a half years, saw it grow to 350 employees. Um, cool. I built um, four different revenue facing teams while I was there. And then I got hunted by Incentivio last um, spring. And after a heavy self-reflection period, <laughs> I decided to go for it. I couldn't say no to the opportunity. And I really wanted to learn about the guest engagement side of the industry. I also have a marketing degree. So kind of fell nice. back on did that. Did you go to U of S? I did. Yeah. The yeah. Saskatchewan people make noise, Dominic. I'm just telling you that. Please. Nice. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Anyways, I, so Stacey, it's, it, now I'm looking on the site here. It says $249 a month. Tell us more about that. Not that we're selling stuff tonight, folks. Yeah. But I want to see, it seems pretty cheap because you've also indicated, is this reduce a person or a person we may not have in staff? Exactly. So like, well, I mean, also, like I talked to a, a brand in Canada um, who I don't want to say the name because they had one person running. It's like over a hundred locations, one person <laughs> running all of the marketing I was gonna and say not marketing. Are you all calling? of the store operations by themselves. Wow. And like, one one person. Like, yes. <laughs> so she was a very busy person. <laughs> um, so in that case, <laughs> Yes, potentially. I mean, I usually have to present to the marketing team, so I don't mm -hmm. want them to see this and think that they're going to lose their job. I'm looking at it, at it as like a support tool because yeah, yeah. Um, they just don't have the data is so, especially in, in Canada, I feel like data platforms are coming out more in the US, but they haven't quite made it to Canada yet. Mm -hmm. The data is disjointed through a billion different forms of tech. And unless you have somebody full-time data scientist, like analyzing all of that and figuring out, yeah. um, this just makes it easier. And yeah, 249 per month, that's the uh, monthly SaaS fee. And that's it. It's just that we don't charge like post support, no hidden fees. It's, it's that. Another that's one of those, Dominic, you like exactly. those. No, I like yeah. it. I do. Stacey. I just, I think it's smart. It's it, especially for business where I, I was talking to um, a big bank today, a big banking company about, have you ever seen Jay? You've seen them. Your, um, your, uh, what do they call it? Your discount rate statement from the credit card company or from the bank about your credit card and the credit card fees. And there's, I don't know, 50, 55 of them. But it's, it's some, Effing crazy number, right? Yeah. And um, and and when I was asking, I was pressing. The, I, I was being a bit of a jerk, but I was pressing the guy on. What's that fee for? What's that fee for? What's that fee for? What's and you know most of them he couldn't answer. And it was it just it, for sure. Yeah, it's it's terrible, right? It, it, that's a it's in our in this food service industry. It's a big in any retail industry. It's a big bone of contention, right? Because you go to Australia and they got 0.6 percent period flat mm -hmm. and that, that's yeah. all they can do. and here and we're close to three percent or 2.5 you know they they say 1.6 but then there's you know this big 47 different fees so when when companies payment. like yourself just say no here's the flat fee there's no hidden fees maybe, maybe there's no contractor it's only a one-year contract or I, I don't know yeah that's but, typically how we start off yeah one year yeah so your commitment's low. The upside is really big. The, like you've got full support. So, you know, there, there'd be no reason not to do it. And, yeah. and 250 a month. Yeah. That's less than a person, right? A yep. lot. A lot less. Yes. <laughs> um, there are transaction fees involved because we do like the digital ordering. But yeah. the thing about Incentivio is that we will bridge to their current payment processor. So if they've spent time negotiating mm -hmm. those rates, which a lot of Canadian restaurant brands have done a fantastic mm -hmm. job of doing, then they can keep those rates mm -hmm. and we'll just connect to it. Good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. When companies do that, I think it's, I think it's smart. Um, I think this, it, this, it, every industry does it like the, the big banks don't need, you, you know, our point two cents a transaction for every transaction that, like, but they can get it right millions of times a day, so it ends up being a lot of money. Um, how 
what's the you're selling mostly into the US or you sell are you are you focused on Canada or are you focused so, on both? North America, my team, okay. like predominantly the the US. Obviously the market there yeah. is way bigger, but since I've joined the team um and stepping into a, a leadership position with the team, I'm like, just let me focus on Canada and, mm -hmm. and helping that side and then nice. obviously supporting and coaching my team in the US, but still I mean, I, I am there all the time attending conferences. So are you, um, are you getting, are, is Canada being receptive to it? This is new. This it's is like, new. Yeah. I would say, so the only thing I'm running into is because of those, the disjointed tech stack is that unfortunately some of these yeah. operators are locked into really long contracts. No, oh, are they so, serious? Yeah. Yes. Boo hoo. That's so okay. it makes me feel so sad when I come in and they're like, yes. And then they can't because they're locked into a contract and it's like waiting out that contract, having to find interim tools um, until that's over. Or in a situation of a brand we're working with right now, they're like looking for a month to month contract so they can just like buy time to get their ducks organized, knowing that they'll be able to consolidate a lot of stuff with. The platform nice. you know what's interesting also is the integrations you guys have i i know they're huge like a lot of these companies you guys have on your website and stuff that talks about the integrations like toast and um ovation all these companies mm -hmm. that i know the people which is awesome Back. yeah but we we do see them but they're they're slowly coming into canada as well which is hopefully going to help some of this chaos that we have. Absolutely. These are so I am, phenomenal companies. We are partnered so closely with Toast. I actually yeah. built the Toast partnership at Seven Shifts. Did you? So I know that company so you know my boy. from an you know outsider's my boy. perspective. Who's your boy, Sean? Oh, yeah, yeah he, Sean's my boy. Well, he just went live with Incentivio too. Did he? <laughs> yeah, he did. We're working on um, our marketing him. teams, even working on podcasting with him. Tell him I, I have a picture with him. I'll send it to you. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I'll I love Sean. Of you. He's great. <laughs> yeah, me and uh, me and Sean were texting today on some stuff. I sent him. He likes our pop cans, by the way, Dominic. Nice. Oh, uh, he would love those. Yeah, his lines always <laughs> be branding. <laughs> I know. Me and me and Sean met a couple of years ago. We did a conference together. He, he read it. Um, we did a conference together and uh, we got to know each other and I'm like, dude, and then he's been like my sounding board on a lot of, a lot of things. And everyone talks about what he's doing down there because yeah, she said, she just says you're badass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Just I'm> the <laughs> best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he's cool, but, but this is the thing. And I think when you look at, this is what here, I'm going to have a little vent here. Dominic is that. Vent away, Jay. Well, Sean gets it. Okay. He runs a barbecue, bar, like barbecue, smokehouse, shack, rib place, incredible food, all this stuff. But he's embraced these tech companies into a place that's not a fast, fancy, fast cash or anything else. And he's showing the world how to integrate with these companies and work with them, not just mm -hmm. put them in or, or resist them, lean into them. And look what he's done. He's growing an empire. And I'm blown away. So I love to see companies up here do similar stuff. And that also includes in the social aspect of Sean showing everyone how to tell stories. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's why I'm saying like, like in, in Stacy, I see your gap now, as you pointed out, because we don't have many Sean's up here. Do no, we? no, I we found don't. you Canada's restaurant guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Sean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know who came up with that title. It's hard to shake, by the way. I love it. But I was like, just like looking on LinkedIn, like, oh my God, who is like, I literally in my head was thinking like, who, who are the people like Sean in Canada? It's I Jay. On my search. It's, it's Jay. Jay. It's yeah. myself and I. It's me and but Sean. that like brings a really good point. Something I didn't think of with Sean, like, and something I talked to when I'm I don't like, I always tell my, call myself like a non salesy salesperson. I am yeah. here for the industry. I am, I work for the restaurant brand when That's I'm trying to find them a solution that will work for them. If it's not going to work for them, I will tell them. So the fact that Sean has like partnered so closely with these tech mm -hmm. companies 
it's creating a community. That's what hospitality is. It's like going back to the basics. Whereas something I recently was reflecting on is in the US, there are a ton of conferences. And what they do at these conferences is they charge vendors a ton of money for sponsorship. So (laughs) much money. Like $20,000 for a booth space. Like it's ridiculous (laughs) to me. US, that's US. (laughs) Um, I'm going to have to take back that email I sent today. (laughs) And then it's completely free for the operators, which is cool. (laughs) But I think what's happening is it's creating this like divide between vendors and operators. And I'm like, I don't want that to happen. I went to the um, women's rush women and women in restaurant leadership. Um, conference. It was the first year it was happening um, in Nashville, uh, end of last month. And it wasn't a salesy environment, but vendors still had to sponsor. And Mm. I mentioned to the organizers after, I was like, look, I don't plan conferences, but like, is there a way, I understand everybody needs to make money. Is there a way that we can get more creative in the sponsorships where it brings people together instead of a bunch of booths of people sitting behind a desk? Like, I I just want to like be with my people and make connections. And then maybe they're interested about what I'm doing and maybe it can potentially work for their brand. Like that's how I work. (laughs) Well, here's the other thing. I'm going to throw this out here too, Stacey. And I think this is why, you know, I'm happy you're on the show and we'll have to talk after as well. If I'm considered the Sean here in Canada, I'll take that as a compliment. Yes. <laughs> that was the Howard Stern last week, now I'm Sean this week. Oh, so. no. Yeah, it's I great. prefer Sean over Howard Stern. <laughs> well, I'll take Howard, too. He's a, good, what Howard he's a good podcaster. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. Anyways, I was going to say this because I believe this. I believe so strong in this because I've seen it. People follow people. And they connect with people and believe what Sean says instead of a company. So if we have people out there supporting and in and, and bringing their products into these places and these places realizing how important they are to the industry. If they talk about programs like yourself and, and the other programs that they're using, you'll see a better connection. I think that's where we're resisting in Canada, in my mind, is that we're still believing that people follow companies up here and believe these companies and and what they're saying. And, and we, we haven't seen that shift over like we have in the States where we, we really start to know the CEOs of these big companies or we're starting to see and put faces to these companies. This isn't new, by the way, Dominic. Do you remember Wendy's and the Colonel, right? You know, Dave was from Wendy's Dave, and the yeah. Colonel. We, yeah. we related to those brands that way. And today we got dis- disconnected from that, I think, through social. And we, we I think in the early 2000s, we saw that disconnect. Um, we thought, you know, the companies, because I used to do this on menus. It was so strong to put someone's, brand on a menu remember brand recognition and stuff like this when you saw in marketing that if you had a corporate brand beside your product you're probably going to see it win because there was a trust there this has changed so much today that yes. people don't really connect with those big brands or believe those big brands of what they're saying and i think we can thank you know social again once again has influenced a lot of that um where we believe people like sean when sean gets on video and goes hey guys this is a great program you got to try it out we're like oh let's go try it out sean said right instead of the company saying hey you gotta try us out we're gonna be like eh, eh, eh. you know like it's not the same thing so i love when we have people like yourself on the show where we get to learn about your company through you opposed yeah. to hearing it on a commercial that doesn't work people right like yep. and i think that's where we see restaurant i think canada is still a little bit behind in that i think I we're think, getting there i think still it's a little like bit of a also hill. a culture of like you have to trust the people behind the brand. Like you yeah. hear those stories of like, like cancel culture. Yeah. Somebody at a company does something wrong. Guess what? Nobody's going there anymore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But Sean yeah. is trusted. He's been doing this for a few years now. He's consistent and he's built his network. And the same thing. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 and I've done the same thing, you know, to this about me at all, but it, it has been a podcast. <laughs> but it, but the thing is, is I started four years ago, um, probably on the same time, maybe a little bit later than Sean a year or so, but I, it was the same thing. And, and today, Dominic knows how serious I take. It may look like we're having a goofy time and having a great time here and all this stuff, 
No, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's many weekends and stuff of understanding or looking for amazing guests or looking at what that brand is. Do we have it? Is it going to be something that we want to associate our brands with? And how do we build our brand up to be authentic? Like I, I, I typically don't talk about myself or I talk about what I do in a sense. I want to hear everyone else because there's a trust. Like you have to build that trust. You lose that trust. Then I lose four years like that. And it click, it's a click of the finger. No one will believe you. No one will listen to your shows. No, no one will turn into you or no one's going to um, want to come on your show. Right. Cause it's all, all this shift. We're so, I think, I think we have to, we, I think we're so del it's such a delicate place to play. Um, so when we do stuff, it's because we truly believe in it. Like we truly believe in the product because we've done our homework. <laughs> we, yeah. We've we've done a lot of stuff prior to that. We just sometimes make it look like it's pretty easy, right? Domino yeah. makes everything look easy. But isn't that um, what like restaurant life is? My favorite thing in life is, yes, it is actually and sit right. in a restaurant and just like enjoy an amazing meal and have a drink and be with good friends. That's so like exactly. I'm putting my energy towards making their lives easier so that I can continue to have those amazing experiences. <laughs> yeah. Good. No, for you. you're, you're so yeah. right. Though, and that's, that's exactly it. Right. Is that, um, like the, the bear, everybody so should watch the bear who anybody yeah, who Patty. loves going to a restaurant has to watch that movie or that series. Yeah. I could have had my own bear movie show on when I was running my place. I make that place look like a, <laughs> like there's nothing compared to what I used to do. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. That's late night. That's late, late show. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I find this fascinating Stacey and, and I love all the brands you guys are connected with. Um, I think they're awesome. I do. I know a lot of them. I do know the people that are part of them and you guys are connected from the delivery, marketing, payments, POS. You got it all, all in yeah. one spot. I think it's awesome. Now, where's the places that you do want to see more growth within Canada? I know Dominic says you guys are, you're on your trajectory to move up here more and more. Yeah. Are, are, are you going to, is, is Toronto going to be the place that we're going to see more of this? Are we going to see some Vancouver, Calgary? I mean, or, or it's Saskatoon. where those like brands are headquartered. Oh, it's, okay. it's Alberta. Any, Alberta, Toronto. Yeah, Alberta, yeah. a little bit in Vancouver, um, Toronto, absolutely. Um, yeah, I also think that connecting, like I'm very partner oriented when I, I mean, I, I also work for a platform product that has a lot of integrations, but Seven Shifts was the same way. And mm -hmm. I sell very much on a partnership basis, like with my relationships. So the Toast Canada rep and I are very well connected and in helping improve the ecosystem of Canada. Yeah. Something I also thought recently is like, you think about our population and how spread out we are. I don't know if we had the same chance to build a community pre-pandemic that the U.S. would have had because we're so far spread out. Mm -hmm. um, but now hopefully we can do that digitally. <laughs> I think St. Louis opened here in Alberta recently, Jay. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was telling you. I saw you're connected to Trevor. I was telling him he needs to bring something to Saskatoon. <laughs> but well, Saskatoon does Alberta have cool location. places, though. Saskatoon does have cool. I have to give. It has changed Saskatoon's a lot. It's got since a great food scene. Amazing food scene. Um, but but I want to show we this. We have like super large corporate brands. And then really small, tiny restaurants. There's no like mid market. Here. So I have a couple of shout outs because one, the cave is awesome, period. Oh, yeah, two, the cave is sweet. It hasn't changed two, since it was built. <laughs> the first Fuddruckers in Canada was Saskatoon. Really? So do you know that there's only two Fuddruckers in Canada and it's Saskatoon and Regina? <laughs> Did you know that, Dominic? Still, there's still two Fuddruckers yes. in both those cities? Yep. Really? Yep. I um, ask my American colleagues if they know what Fuddruckers is because I took my kids there on Sunday. <laughs> it's, I remember going there with my kids. It's awesome. It's fun. It's awesome, dude. They used to have the beef in the front, be shaving the cow and yeah. hanging the cow. Like, that's way back, way back, Stacey, way back. Anyways, yeah. I do um, want to say our buddy, our buddy from um, John Rubigliati used to run the Calgary Fuddruckers. That's, do you know John, <laughs> John Rubigliati? Yeah. John? Yeah, he no was the way. manager of that location way, way back. Like, way, 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 way back. Fudd is probably gone from Calgary for 20 years. 
At least no and way more. The thing that blew their minds was I was like, I don't think this exists in the U.S., but we also have batting cages and a mini golf course and exactly. an wow. arcade <laughs> beside it. And, all and the did, same and they still lot. probably do well, right? Do they do? Good? Oh yeah, it's packed all the time. I oh think they God, would do Stacey. good in Calgary. I, I really do. I think they do. Oh, today it would. Today it would. Today it would. Anyways, I do want to tell you a few of these things that were reminiscing from Saskatoon. But I do want to put a couple of things out here, Stacey, because these are significant big numbers here. So St. Louis Bar and Grill, they since they switched to you, they've seen an increase in 66% in their digital sales. That's oh, insane. Yeah. It's insane. I mean... The numbers are different, obviously, if you like have an existing app and you want to consolidate and come through. But there's a lot of brands in Canada that don't have an app. They don't have, I mean, they might have online ordering, but that's what I mean about people defaulting to third party because the experience is better for a guest. Like I downloaded the Dairy Queen app. Dairy Queen is the most fragmented brand in all of the restaurant industry. I download mm -hmm. their app. Guess what? I sign up for an account and I get some promo codes, but there's like, I can't order from it. There's no loyalty. I can't do anything. Why would I have an app on my phone where I can just get some promo codes? Like, can I just get those off the internet and not have the app on my phone? Um, so then you default and you go to third party, uh, Uber, Skip, DoorDash, any of those. But I'm hoping to be a part of helping change that culture. Mm -hmm. So that well, we can I, I go think to the well, restaurant brand gotta, before we go to third yeah. party. But I think you got an incredible, these are great, incredible numbers. Dominic, these are huge numbers. When you're driving revenue that some of these places are doing, those are big numbers. When you're moving up 50, 70, 85, you know, all these percentages, even wing it. Wings are hard to sell. Just FYI. And you're and increasing that, 13 and that, um, 13. That 13.18% was on basket value from our we have a feature called upsell it's like yeah you yeah, yeah. Probably i want to ask you about that before we get go, upselled yeah. before you check out um and they didn't currently have that in place so it's really interesting when i'm talking okay, to brands, tell us more about this them, upsell what is this upsell? Yeah. because i saw it on here so essentially part. it's data science and we will take what is in the guest current basket and then look at what other people have paired along those items so it'll avoid Shoot, like no replacements. Way. It'll avoid like it'll it'll work with seasonality um, and work to suggest them items. So we can increase that basket value for them there. Um, and then also they're able to override it if you want. Like we have a mm -hmm. client in Miami that's very environmentally focused and they don't want to put cutlery with every single delivery order. So they add it as a, override to add cutlery um really? versus the upsell but that is an option for the guests yeah that's cool could have that yeah. for a plastic bags eh dominic yeah <laughs> one bags. cool thing <laughs> i want to talk about this feature we released last year is um menu intelligence yeah okay so it that. ranks your menu items from zero to 100 green yellow red mm -hmm. um and lets you know which are your best selling menu items but it's not just best selling it's what menu items are turning your customers into more loyal customers so wow. like is fries your number one selling item yeah mm -hmm. probably but guess what we give fries with every single meal so it's not really creating more loyal customers and that is perfect for somebody like me who goes into a restaurant and is like I have a gluten allergy. So I'm like, I have a gluten allergy server's recommendation. Like I always go for the server's recommendation. Yeah. So sometimes if I'm ordering online, I just get like overwhelmed or like sick of choices. And I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore. I'll just make mac and cheese or something. <laughs> um, so I would love to have somebody suggesting to me menu items that um, might be better for me based on my preferences. That's awesome. Yeah, Where's the company headquartered? Boston. Boston. And they started mm -hmm. about eight years ago. And are they, are they international or just focused on North American market still? North American. Yeah. I mean, you talk about the tech companies slowly coming up to Canada. Like for a lot of them, 
it might not be worth it. Like California has more yeah. people than all of Canada. So yeah. if they can yeah. sell within one state, it's like, there you go. But in the case of Toast and um, another point of sale provider we integrate with, Q point of sale, um, they have brands that are essentially bringing them up to Canada. Mm. So they're working with these brands to come in, but then like Toast, for example, needs to get certain pieces in order to release more of the suite that they have compared to the US. Wow. They've been right. there for 10 years. So yeah, it's a, uh, I well, appreciate people like Toast and Q and Incentivio. Yeah, I'm that. impressed. Well done. St- another another <laughs> winner guest there, Dominic. <laughs> Yeah, you're just like batting 100, man. You're doing awesome. And seriously, like another, this is incredible, Stacey. Thank you so much (laughs) for coming on our show tonight. And and, uh, I don't know if it's snowing there. It's snowing here right now. No. Um, It's it's coming your way. We had a cold day today, but is it supposed to snow? I'm like. I don't know. I don't know if you get enough. I mean, that massive snow we got was, it was like two and a half feet. It was crazy. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and in Tennessee, good. they're talking about rain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One one point five centimeters, right? <laughs> Some, no day. inches. One point, <laughs> okay, well, two and a half, three centimeters. One big. Oh, mm-hmm. Wow, you got two yeah. and a half feet. feet yeah. Cool. Anyways, well, Stacy, dance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, Stacy, for joining yes. us tonight. Don't go anywhere as we wrap up here. We want to chat okay. with you before you go. Sure. I always got to say that now because everyone disappears. And they, get, they run oh, away I'll from wait. us. They run I can't through. leave the comedy show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much, Stacey. Everyone, please, thanks, Stacey. you go over to uh, your website. It's at .com. Is that right? Incentive.com. Yeah. Well, don't, Incent- don't even try to let incentive? her say it. Like incentive. We're incentivizing. Incentive, oh. so incentivio. Incentivio. Yes. incentivio. I can't. I can't even. Try. We'll talk about changing. Can, can we change that? names of your company? Well, that's why you let me do the Jeez. intro today. Let me. Let me say. Yeah. Thank you. And I, mean, and I would just default to Stacy. Stacy, can you remind us about the website again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's his, that's his trick. There you go. You, you it's like when you meet somebody tricks. and you can't remember their name, and then you introduce yeah. your friend. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know that trick. I just learned something. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Well, that's the best again? trick ever. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, <laughs> Stacey, th- thank you again. You don't know anything. Yeah, okay. It's the, the poor girl's going to go b- to work tomorrow, Dominic. Anyways, we <laughs> thanks again. And uh, everyone else, we'll let you go, Stacey. And we'll don't go anywhere. We'll just pull you out of here. Anyways, Dominic, <laughs> another hey, winner. Um, we say, I don't think we said again, this isn't a podcast. We only said no, it once. It's not. It's not. Nope. Yeah. Not a podcast, right? No, not at all. But not it's on all. the regular. It might be out there with the other stuff somewhere. Yeah, it is. I've okay. heard it's out You've there heard, with the other. It's not podcast it's stuff. It's not right? a podcast. It's a live no, streaming it's a pod- event. Yeah, show. Yeah. Show. Late night show. Yeah, we're Late trying for TV. Show. If that even, I don't think you need to be on TV anymore. No. Why would you go no. to TV? Yeah. Anyways. But that was incredible. Eh? I love the upsell yeah. thing. I love the menu thing. I love the pricing integrations to every cool. Yeah, system no hidden there. fees. Good for them. No hidden Supports fees. Supports included. They're not charging you for storing your shit. Like just yeah, good for them. She's in Canada. Yeah, well, in Saskatoon. And Saskatoon? seven. Yeah. Good. Good for good for Saskatoon. I didn't know that. Um, seven shifts was from, from there, but they, you know, Incentivio did the right thing. They went and grabbed the best person. And yeah, um, put her on the job, yeah. man. So awesome, good for them. Yeah, they're going to have incredible success because again, now back to everyone needs a podcast. Everyone needs something like this. They they do. Restaurants need this. They need it. Need it. Need it. I don't know cool. how you do it without. Well, I. The, w- but my first question was, do people even know it's there? Back to we've had we've had this discussion many times. People that don't go look have no idea what well, all the tech out there that can help their business right that's why we have them on our show dominic that's exactly. why we bring them on our show that's why we yeah. we have everyone on our show so we can bring this to the industry in canada we're yeah. going to keep hunting and finding these amazing companies that are up here or coming up here or are up here and we just don't know yeah. about them because i think the amount of shows that we've done lately in the last few weeks 
I didn't hear. I didn't really know about them. I gotta ask her if she's going we to the restaurant. I don't. Show. You don't know about these ones. You know, there's no. a gap. Yeah, so we need to bring them up. Is, is uh, we'll have to ask her um, off air. But if, is she? Can we bring her back in for a sec? Yep. We do anything we want. I Sorry, am. One more question. I am are going. You, oh, you're gonna be at the RC show. Cool. So, so will yeah. I. But are you gonna have a, a not twenty thousand dollar booth there? I uh, correct. It cost me one hundred and sixty eight dollars for a two day pass. <laughs> oh, you're just, oh, you're just attending. You can come yeah, and I'll hang out at our booth, and I'll let you hand out stuff if you want. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> I will do that. I'll be walking around. We even have we're hosting an event, so I should invite cool. you guys. Nice. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you will be there. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, don't bye, invite yeah. the restaurant. Okay. Guy. Bye. Don't do that. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you later, Daisy. Anyways, Dominic, another great guest. She, we want her to still hang out if she's listening. Okay. Yeah, they still going to. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna grill it. We're gonna grill you later. Anyways, another great show, Dominic. And tomorrow, we have another show with another rock star. And I think that's going to be like, I don't know. We haven't really had a bad show lately. Not that we ever had. No. We never had a bad show, Jay. Come on. Never had a bad show. It's not a show, by the way. We save, we save that for safe check. Exactly. For the safe check show. <laughs> no, on, when, awesome. So, Jay, can I just tell you one thing? Why we changed the name of that show? The safe check? For the safe the co- check podcast? Right? My co-host can announce the fucking name, man. <laughs> no, that was the shtick of it. It was the shtick. It was the funny part that I couldn't say. <laughs> 27 shows later, and I think you finally got it. Then we changed the name, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rule, people. We do podcast, name your shit one thing. <laughs> the purple podcast would win a hundred times with me. The late night show, the purple late, pickle, late right? Night show, we'll Is do it. The one. purple pickle, yeah. The late night. I got my newsletter, it's purple pickle, yeah. The purple pickle newsletter, purple pickle, yeah. It's awesome. I think that yeah. that. That, I, I like that name actually. Yeah, do you see it's pick it, the, pep, the the pickles are pick, pink. Oh, it's, yeah. is it called uh, the pink pickle and not the purple it's pickle? Not purple <laughs> oh, see, well, so much for me knowing the name. <laughs> yeah, thanks. But you should go trademark that name too. In case somebody pickle. wants to have a competitive podcast. Yeah, maybe we'll switch it. You'll see that tonight. <laughs> I'll be working on it. Anyways, she's incredible. Program's incredible. I I really like everyone. Let's start embracing some of these tech companies. I know it's a mess in the past, and I've seen it. Uh, These companies are coming up here and having solutions all under one umbrella. I think it's the way to go. Exactly. And and the the cost isn't what 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 they used to be like right now. No, they're not even. Entry is really low. They're low. Yeah, and getting that like. You're, you're wasting money right now on doing it's multiple crazy, things. You know if you can get it all under one, it's awesome. So is all cool. you can grow, you'll make more money. That's the it's whole field by innovation and new technology. Well, and, and and look at the benefit After to your customers, right? Natural restaurant. So and you'll and you're growing your brand, which is me and you know is really important now, and to that restaurant. Whether you're looking to all right, adapt let's wrap it up. Thanks everyone to for joining us tonight. Thanks, you don't go anywhere. We'll be chatting with you in a second. And everyone else, have a great evening. And we'll see you tomorrow night. I am pretty sharp, Dominic. Wow. So let's talk about this. So, yeah. You're going to see ideas come to life at the National Restaurant Show. You're going to find inspiration. And you're going to find the next big concept and everything that will help you with your business. Do you know this show floor, which is absolutely massive, has over 900 product categories from award-winning food and beverage items to innovative back-of-the-house equipment and technology. I hope I'm going to see one of those little robots. This event is your one-stop shop. So you know what you need to do? Go to the official website, www.nationalrestaurantshow.com. And register with promo code PODCAST24 to save $55 off your current registration rate. When it comes to staying on top of what's happening in hospitality and ahead of what's next, that's important, people. That is very important. There's no place like this show. Join your peers at the show. 
for food service in Chicago, May 18th to the 21st, and get a taste of the future. I can't wait.